let's discuss the best way to balance your hormones. Now, this method is pretty expensive. I don't know if you're going to be able to afford it. It's actually free, okay? Because you are fasting and you're actually saving money while you're doing this. But believe it or not, fasting is probably one of the best things you can do for your endocrine system, all the different hormones, as well as a lot of other systems, including your autonomic nervous system, which I will cover in another video. Now, when they did the research uh, with fasting, um, sometimes they used uh, alternative day fasting where you're pretty much eating what you want one day and then you're not eating anything the next day, right? I don't like that at all because you never really get into any type of adaptation. So it's probably pretty painful and hard to do because you never get rid of your appetite. And then you have the five and two, which I also don't like, where five days a week, you're eating what you want. And then two days of the week, probably on a Saturday and Sunday, you're doing 500 calories. Again, you're not going to be able to adapt into fat burning too well. And you're probably going to suffer through those two days. Okay, then you have time restricted eating, um, which is intermittent fasting, where you have a certain window where you eat and then you don't eat for another window. So it could be, for example, 18 hours of fasting and six hour eating window, or maybe 20 hours of fasting and a four hour eating window. So I'm going to cover all the main hormones, but this right here, this hormone right here, this is where you're going to see most of the benefits. Okay. Insulin, insulin reduction, insulin sensitivity, all that is improved when you do fasting. And if we look at the magnitude or the influence of reducing insulin on your entire body, as far as health goes, I mean, it's just off the charts as far as benefits, you decrease inflammation. Well, guess what that's going to do to your thyroid, which by the way, 90% of all thyroid problems when we're dealing with autoimmune is Hashimoto's and you're going to have a lot of inflammation. So just by reducing inflammation, you automatically improve the thyroid gland, okay? Diabetes, this is involving a gland called the pancreas, right? It's part of the endocrine system. Uh, and then you have insulin resistance, which is behind so many problems, including developing a fatty liver and gaining weight and metabolic syndrome, which includes high cholesterol and high blood pressure. And like I said before, the autonomic nervous system. See, when you have high insulin and high glucose, your autonomic nervous system, which involves the flight or fight mechanism, the digestive system, uh, the cardiovascular system, all of that is improved greatly when you normalize insulin. One side effect from a diabetic is autonomic nervous system dysfunction, especially in the digestive system and in many other systems since the autonomic nervous system crosses over into a lot of different body systems. Okay, let's, where do we start? Well, let's start with leptin. Leptin uh, decreases when you're fasting and leptin has everything to do with your appetite. So your appetite is gonna go down. It's gonna make it really easy to fast when you have no appetite. You hear rumors that fasting will negatively affect the thyroid. Really? Well, how do you diagnose a hypothyroid condition or even a hyperthyroid condition by thyroid stimulating hormone, which is a pituitary hormone, okay? You don't diagnose it with T4, you diagnose it with this pituitary hormone. And by the way, when you do fasting, there is no change with this thyroid stimulating hormone. There is a decrease in T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone, but that is occurring because you're either losing weight or your ability to burn fat is increasing, decreasing the need for energy. See, before you did fasting, the metabolism seemed to be slow because you're only burning glucose. You're not tapping into your fat reserves. So your whole energy system is off. It requires a lot more T3 to run this body machine. Well, now it doesn't, so it goes down. It's just adapting. So the thyroid does not suffer when you do healthy fasting. And I'm talking about fasting with nutrients because of all the complications that occur when someone fasts, it mainly has to do with the electrolyte losses, okay? And compounded by B vitamin deficiencies. So as long as you have the sea salt, electrolytes, and B vitamins, um, you're gonna definitely 
avoid a lot of issues. All right, the next one I'm gonna talk about is androgens for females. But guess what? If you're a female, you don't want a lot of androgens because that's a condition called PCOS. You have too many androgens. So you get facial hair, you get alopecia, you lose your hair, you start having a deeper voice, you start gaining weight. So that condition actually is improved with fasting. In fact, what's really behind this spike in androgens is insulin. So when you do fasting, you lower insulin and you normalize androgens and things start coming back into balance. With females, when you do fasting, there hasn't been any major change with follicle stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone. The two uh, hormones that come from the pituitary that come down to the ovary, those two hormones are not affected by fasting. And then we have estrogen. There doesn't seem to be a lot of change with estrogen when you're doing fasting. Now, what about in some of the mice studies? Okay, they have they show infertility. Well, there's really a lack of evidence of infertility. There has been a loss of the menstrual cycle for a period of time. But what's interesting about these rodent studies is that the total menstrual cycles of the lifespan of a rat don't seem to decrease. It's only when they're doing fasting. So apparently that menstrual cycle just continues a little bit longer in their life. There hasn't been any evidence to show that fasting uh, causes infertility in human bodies. All right, now what about testosterone in men? Some studies show that it does decrease, but with no loss in strength. But in other studies, it does show that it will increase luteinizing hormone by 67% and increase testosterone by 180%. From my knowledge, working with tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, I have not seen a negative problem with testosterone uh, in men at all when they're doing fasting. Let's now get into cortisol. Okay, here's another misconception. Um, you'll see little articles that will talk about the negative aspects of uh, fasting because it's going to increase your cortisol and you're going to be stressed out. The first thing you need to know is that if cortisol does increase, you're not going to then be stressed out because cortisol is a hormone that responds to stress. It doesn't cause stress. It just causes the body to adapt to stress states. And cortisol is a counter-regulatory hormone. So in other words, when you stop eating sugar and your blood sugar goes down, cortisol is mobilized to increase your sugar to a certain level. But if you're increasing your cortisol temporarily from fasting, okay, and not chronic stress, what is interesting is that there's two different receptors for cortisol, okay? One receptor that's involved with stress and another receptor involved with other things that might trigger cortisol. And so apparently when you're doing fasting and you have an increase of cortisol, the effects are not bad. The effects are not the same as uh, a stress response. And that has everything to do with what that cortisol does with the receptor and the different effects that that receptor will then create. But if you want more information on that topic, there is a real interesting dialogue by Dr. Uh, Mark Madison, okay? And I put that link down below where he talked about that. He's a um, researcher in this area, in the topic of fasting. Now, what about growth hormone? Well, guess what? Growth hormone will increase. And that's a good thing because growth hormone is all about repair. It's about muscle. It's about increasing your endurance. It's about healing. It's an anti-aging hormone, and it's also a fat-burning hormone. It's going to help mobilize uh, fat as fuel. What about prolactin? Okay, well, there's apparently no change with prolactin. And the two other things I want to mention in this video is, number one, fasting greatly improves your circadian rhythms. It improves certain timing flows in your body, and with that comes along a lot of different hormone flows that are set up on a timing mechanism. So just by the fact of improving your circadian rhythms, you're gonna improve your hormones overall, or at least balance these hormones that have been out of balance probably because of this, too much insulin. Last point I wanna bring up is your gut microbiome greatly improves when you do fasting. And from that comes a lot of improvements with your hormones as well, which I will have to do another video on that. Now, I think the next most appropriate video 
to show you is the one on fasting, how to do it correctly. Check it out. I put it right here.